Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. A very holy priest who died here in Detroit 15 years ago once said, any Catholic who is not about the business of evangelization might never entertain a serious hope of the beatific vision. His name was Father John Harden, and he made other startling, truthful comments like, only heroic Catholics will be saved. What was this servant of God seeing that so many others, especially those in the church, and moreover those in leadership roles in the church, are not seeing or refuse to see? Here is what he saw. Leaders in the church are not serious, eternal life and death serious, about evangelization. That's what he saw. Too many in the church have slipped into a kind of corporate mindset of managing the current disaster, the decline of the faith, like CEOs would make plans for discontinuing a tired product line. Those who do not have as their chief priority the salvation of souls will be damned. That is the shorthand, in-your-face translation of what Father Hardin said. It was the last command our blessed Lord gave as he ascended to heaven. Many in the church today have labored magnificently over the creation of new evangelization plans in the forms of committees and programs and blueprints and courses of study. But to what avail? Where are the necessary conversions to the one true faith established by the Son of God personally? Where are the outfront challenges to other religions like they give to us that many of their preachings are false and man-made, no matter how sincerely held? The only stamp of heaven they might enjoy is when they are preaching something gotten from the Catholic faith. Aside from that, as the psalm says, those who choose other gods increase their sorrows. Where are the preachings in this new evangelization that if you do not die in a state of grace, you are eternally deprived of the beatific vision. You will never see God in the face. Why do we never hear of what our Lord spoke of almost nonstop as part and parcel of his divine revelation, that there is a hell and people go there? Why are men like now Bishop Robert Barron and others promoted as men to be modeled in this new evangelization effort when they deny that anyone really goes to hell, using as their sources men like von Balthasar, who practically Xeroxed his theology from the heretic Protestants like Karl Barth? What this institutional level approach to preaching the gospel does is to place into people's minds the idea that the hard teachings can be sort of left unsaid while we concentrate on everything we have in common with other religions to the neglect of the differences. Those differences are infinite. For example, the Blessed Sacrament. No other religion in the world, not any of its adherents, believe in the real presence of our blessed Lord, body, blood, soul and divinity under the appearance of bread and wine in the sacrifice of the Holy Mass. How do you talk to someone about the need to become Catholic without challenging or at least bringing up this teaching? How do you talk to someone without, about converting without telling them what Jesus wanted them to know? Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. For an evangelizing Catholic, those words should engender shock and sorrow at the same time. But for those in the church who like to sidestep inconvenient parts of divine revelation, they simply pass over it with the rationalization that, well, we have a reasonable hope that all men are saved, so why rock the boat with a hard saying? That sounds very much like how the Jews at Capernaum reacted, the first to hear those unsettling yet also comforting words from our Savior. When the phrase convert or die is used, it generally has the connotation of a threat to the prospective convert. In reality, it is a promise of divine retribution for the Catholic who is not helping others come to the truth. You convert, not him, but you convert from your spiritual sloth, your excuse making, your blowing off of your sacred duty to bring the truth to others, or you will die in your sin. The gravity of this is perhaps best understood by looking at the converse from the last lines of the letter of St. James. No, brothers, that whoever brings a brother back from the error of his ways will not only save his own soul from death, but will cover a multitude of sins. If that is the beautiful reward for converting a soul to the bride of Christ, what will be the punishment for not doing so? 
God love you. I'm Michael Voris.